What is good, Josh? I'm the Tool Game Man, back in with yet another reaction video, baby. And today, we are back with yet another death battle. And today, we got Ryu versus Jin, one of my favorite games versus a very popular series. Yes, Tekken is one of my favorite part, is my favorite fighter game of all time. I prefer Tekken over any of the other fighters Street Fighter, um, Injustice, Mortal Kombat. I'm on Tekken before any of them, and I'm whooping anybody in Tekken. It does not matter. When Tekken 8 drops, you guys can get these work. I said these, this work over on the gaming channel, Smooth Guy Gaming. Make sure you guys head over there and subscribe if you guys are ready for some Tekken 8 gameplay, as well as subscribe, like, and comment over here too, as well. Bro, the 5K as we go ahead and jump into this thing, man. But hey, let it be known now pre fight, um, pre I almost said prescriptions. <laughs> really, pre -fight, nigga? fight, uh, I almost said suspicions. Well, what? if we don't get. Um, dang, what's the word? When you uh pre predictions, there we go. Pre pre fight predictions. Ryu Jin, who y'all got? You know I'm going with my boy Jin. Let's go ahead and hop straight into it. We'll you know cut out a little bit of stuff in here and there, but we'll kind of keep in their like main abilities. We won't show their backstory, and then we'll show the fight. Everyone has different reasons for studying martial arts. For personal honor, to improve health, and for kicking the crap out of the other people. Like with Ryu, the wandering world warrior of Street Fighter. And Jin Kazuma, the power-hungry martial arts master of Tekken. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. With Yan Satsuken style, Ryu is a master at close quarter combat. With such techniques as the Shoryuken uppercut and the flying hurricane kick, he can take down most foes in mere seconds. He's like a living helicopter of pain, but he can also use his key as a weapon, firing a fireball of energy from his palms. Say it with me, Hadouken! Goken's version of the Yan Satsuken also taught Ryu several defensive techniques, including the skill to parry most other attacks with precise timing. And with all these awesome powers of whooping ass, Ryu eventually made his way to the World Warrior Tournament. With his skills, Ryu quickly reached the top of the competition. For the title of World Warrior, he faced his toughest opponent yet, Sagat. Who ended up beating the shit out of him. But Sagat was surprisingly a pretty good sport, so when he thought the fight was over, he offered Ryu a hand up. And in that moment, something dark swelled from within Ryu's consciousness. A force so fierce and destructive, he couldn't contain it, and he lashed out. With an enraged shout and an explosion of blood, Ryu emerged as champion over Sagat's near-dead body. Ryu's dark side had been unleashed. This was the Satsui no Hana. A violent inner force so extreme, its name actually means surge of murderous intent. If I ever knowingly father a child, I know what I'm naming him. Under the influence of the Satsui no Hado, Ryu falls into an uncontrollable rage known as Evil Ryu, where his physical and spiritual power skyrockets. He can even teleport and use Akuma's favorite technique, the Shun Goku Satsu, which literally translates to instant hell murder. Okay, shit, now I gotta have two kids that I care about. The Shun Goku Satsu, or the Raging Demon, is a fatal move which attacks the very soul of its victims with the gravity of all their past sins. To make them die 1,000 deaths! But while the Satsui no Hado is a manifestation of Ryu's dark side, he has achieved balance with the light. This is called Mu no Ken, or the power of nothingness. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What's he gonna do with nothing? By focusing on mental and spiritual refinement and detachment, Ryu has achieved the ultimate state of being. This begets a power strong enough to match and even surpass the Satsui no Hado. Oh yeah, that's how Goken survived Akuma's hell murder attack. And now Ryu's got the same power. Look at him go. With all this power, Ryu's performed some incredible feats. Aside from winning the World Warrior Tournament, he's dodged bullets, destroyed skyscrapers, and survived Balrog's Gigaton Blow. Yeah, remember him from that boxing match we did? He's strong enough to kill an elephant in one punch. Ryu is so tough that he survived getting impaled. And when he goes evil mode, he can just walk through gunfire. He's strong enough to lift this enormous boulder over his head. By estimating the boulder's volume compared to Ryu's height and assuming a sandstone composition, we can determine it must weigh at least 36 tons. Plus, there's a guy sitting on top of the boulder, and he's lifting his own boulder! Man, Oro's cool. While Ryu's fighting record isn't perfect, his wins far outnumber his losses. He's defeated his friend Ken, the dictator M. Bison, and even a genetically engineered super warrior named Seth. 
But those were just pit stops compared to his frequent battles with Akuma. And if you don't know, Akuma shattered an island with a single punch, split Ayer's rock in half in Australia, and jumped to the ocean surface from 4,000 feet below in three seconds while destroying a submarine. That's about 3,000 miles per hour, by the way, and I guess he just powered through the bends. Yeah, he's definitely final boss material. And so, years after Akuma's attack on his foster father, Ryu faced him for the final time. And with the power of Mu no Ken on his side, Ryu was victorious. All in a day's work for everyone's favorite street fighter. He's got all sorts of techniques that can pack a punch. Such as the flash punch combo and the electrically charged lightning screw uppercut. Or his famous 10 hit combo chain. Once he gets you stuck in his flurry of punches and kicks, you're not going anywhere until he finishes you off with a classic dragon uppercut. With these talents and a thirst for revenge, Jin entered his grandfather's King of Iron Fist tournament. There, he came face to face with the ogre once again. But instead of, you know, interrogating him to find out what happened to his mother, Jin just killed him. Nice job, stupid. There goes the only lead you had. Yeah, nothing tastes better than sweet, sweet revenge. Except for maybe mom's cooking. Well, unfortunately, it didn't last long, because he got shot up by his grandfather. Oh, that son of a bitch. Mama always said, never trust a bald man who tells his barber, give me the Wolverine. But Jin had a little surprise for Heiachi, and for himself, actually. Thanks to his family line, he has inherited the dreaded and parasitic Devil Gene, which turns him into a flying laser shooting demon person. Now that's one genetic disorder you can sign me up for. Good news then, I've been working on an artificial digestible version of the Devil Gene myself. Oh yeah? Would that happen to be the chewy fruit candy in the blue bucket? What did you do? Well, my dog Jack Spaniels was wandering around scrounging for food as he does, and uh, I was wondering why he suddenly grew horns and wings. You've got to be shitting me. Anyway, compared to his base form, Devil Jin's strength, speed, and durability are better than ever. Devil Jin is strong enough to throw people dozens of feet and even smash them through walls. For this instance in particular, he's pushing Heihachi through the limestone wall of an Aztec pyramid. To do this, Jin must have struck the wall with force equal to at least 10 tons per square inch. Hell, Jin is stronger than this guy called Raven, who can toss around this giant war robot named Nancy! When compared to real-life robots of similar size and accounting for additional weaponry and gear, this machine should weigh anywhere between 15 to 30 tons. Also, Jin is fast enough to dodge bullets and fly into orbit. And survive falling all the way back down! Which puts his maximum flight speed over escape velocity. That's more than 25,000 miles per hour. He can even punch so fast he causes shock waves. That's right, Jin throws punches faster than the speed of sound. Remind me never to give him a high five. Totally reasonable, considering his grandfather can catch bullets in his teeth from just 20 feet away. And surely Jin can do better than that. Heihachi doesn't even have the devil gene. That's right. The devil gene traces back not to Heihachi, but to Jin's grandmother. Who freaking rides tigers. As a result, Heihachi's son Kazuya inherited the devil gene and passed it on to Jin. Kazuya's powers are basically the same as Jin's, and he's shown just how far the devil form can go. He shot a blast powerful enough to erupt a volcano and survived a satellite laser straight out of Independence Day. This is the same laser that once shot the robotic soldier Gunjack. By measuring the blast radius and resulting devastation, the laser's firepower appears to equal 3.7 megatons of TNT. You know the bomb that got dropped on Nagasaki in World War the sequel? Yeah, this laser's like 176 of those hitting all at once. While the devil gene can sometimes be difficult for Jin to control, it provides an enormous advantage against almost any foe. With it, he's won three of the four King of Iron Fist tournaments he's entered. He's defeated Heihachi, Kazuya, and even the supposed OG Devil Man himself, Azazel. Too bad he had to start World War the Second sequel just to find him. Kind of a dick move. Jin's certainly no angel, and hardly a hero. Still, when it comes down to it, he is the child of destiny, and not even the devil's blood can seal his fate. Yeah, I know what it is. Go ahead and put them last second uh, comments down below. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into the fight. I think they got some kind of, you know, they always have them pay promotions coming here. They ain't paying me, so we're gonna skip that. We get straight to the action. Yeah. 
There's no way I can lose. Talk is cheap. The answer lies in the heart of battle. I walk the path of the true warrior. But ain't no way. I'm pretty sure if I watch the stats correctly, Jin should be stronger. Jin should be faster. Because Devil Mode honestly is way more stronger because he can shoot that laser at any point. They made him do it when he flew and then when he got up close, but he could have been doing it the whole fight to counteract the Hadouken. And he probably could have countered that because I've seen the actual movie where he fought Kazuya, like how strong that laser really was like. I'm going to disagree with this one. We're going to hold the L, though, because you know, I'm rocking Team Jin, but uh, I'm, I'm disagreeing with this wholeheartedly. I think Jin will take this. Not easily, obviously, but no. I think they I think they, I think they, they glaze him a little bit on Ryu. K.O. Oh, I get why it's called the power of nothingness now. There's nothing left in his chest. This one was a tricky match to decipher. Both Ryu and Jin had many displays of incredible feats, but very few truly showcased the upper limits of their power. We know that in their base forms, both could lift around 30 tons and move at supersonic speeds. Also, we know Ryu could maintain a much better level of control and discipline in Muno Ken than Jin in Devil Form. Yeah, hardcore Tekken fans know he had pretty good control over it in that Blood Vengeance movie, but it's pretty inconsistent with game canon. Even Tekken's creator has said it's not canon. Also, Jin's fall from orbit feat was impressive, but it is hard to quantify due to its presentation. 
even if we assume we are to take it literally, a man of Jin's size landing at terminal velocity would equal around 18 tons of force. But to find their limits, we had to scale them to comparable characters. Scaling Jin to his father Kazuya was logical. Kazuya survived that 3.7 megaton laser blast, and it's clear it was necessary for him to be in devil form to do so. Kazuya's own laser blast was strong enough to help kick off a volcano's eruption, a feat which could require up to 100 megatons of TNT. But that's a very generous estimate, and its actual potency is likely much less. Since their power comes from the same place, and Jin's even defeated Kazuya before, it's safe to say Jin can do all this too. As for Ryu, we knew exactly who we had to scale him to. Let's talk about Akuma. First off, just to prove this scaling is reasonable. Just as a brief, uh, I'm pretty sure in Tekken 7, you end the game by having to beat Akuma with Kazuya. And if Jin can beat Kazuya, and Kazuya beats Akuma. Okay, I, I don't know. That, that's... I, I, Ryu and Akuma share very similar abilities. Both were trained in the Atsutsuken fighting style, and both possessed the Satsui no Hado. They fought each other several times, and when the story was all said and done, Ryu emerged, ultimately victorious, based on his skill alone. Now that that's out of the way, let's watch Akuma punch an island to death! With a single strike, Akuma managed to break apart an entire island so thoroughly that Ryu, who was on the island, was left floating helplessly in nearly clear water. Assuming the island is somewhat circular, we've estimated the volume and deduced that in order to fragment the island like this, Akuma's punch must have been over 400 megatons of TNT. That's more than four times stronger than anything a devil gene has pulled off. And Ryu takes blows from this guy all the time! Sure, Ryu wasn't getting hit with 400 megatons every time Akuma landed a punch, but the most a devil gene carrier has ever survived amounts to less than 1% in comparison. Even if Jin could survive a strike as strong as Kazuya's volcano feet, it still pales in comparison. The fact that Ryu survived being on the island as it was blown apart helps justify this scaling. My dude just fell in the water. He didn't get hit with the punch, though. Uh, I too. Well, Jin still takes the speed advantage with that flight into orbit, but it doesn't mean much when the difference of power and toughness is this massive. When it came down to it, Ryu's strength, durability, and control were just too far out of Jin's reach. Wait, Wiz, we forgot a feat. You remember that Gunjack robot? A later model of Jack once destroyed a meteor. Couldn't we just scale Jin to that? Well, it's unsupported by canon material, but even if we did, Guess who destroyed an even bigger meteor? Akuma. Akuma. Damn. Well, gin up, everybody. Ryu's taking care of business. The winner is Ryu. And once again, the only reason I'm saying the whole Akuma thing is because he's in Tekken, and to beat the game, you have to beat him. I'm pretty sure it's with Kazuya. It might even be with Jin, though. But you have to beat him because he crosses over into Tekken. And so to have to beat him to continue the story tells me that that means that he ends up winning overall. So if Ryu beats Akuma, Akuma beats Kazuya, Kazuya, so no, Akuma, Kazuya, put Ryu up here, Jin beat Kazuya, because technically I'll put them on the same level, they both did the same beat. He beat him. And let's not act like, you know, my man wasn't trying to do anything with his uh, his blast. Like, I mean, was just shooting it at the ground, trying to kill his father. He wasn't even trying to start up quick. So he probably wasn't even using it at full power. Let's talk about that. Like, was he really using it at full power? My dude just punched an island. They're like, oh, well, he can survive 400 tons. He didn't get hit directly. Even if he did get affected by the aftershocks of the punch, it would be downgraded. The only thing that got hit with 400 tons was the ground. Everything afterwards, it's like a car. When you buy it, it immediately starts losing value off the lot. A punch is less powerful the further away you are from it. So unless he took that bit to the chest and the island around him destroyed, then I'll give him 400 tons. But until then, it looked like my dude just was standing on the island. Oh, snap, island broke, I'm on the ground. Or oh, I'm in the water. Like, we don't know he took that punch. And let's not act like we haven't seen speed literally be, literally be the thing that can win you a lot of different competitions. So the fact that they're saying he's way faster tells me that I feel like Jin should have been able to dodge a lot of those. Listen, we all game, right? 
Those heavy characters with the big attack power take a long time to get their moves off. If you have a fast character, you know what you're doing, you're going around it every single time. If I got a character that knows how to box around, he's fast and he can move and he's shifty, I'm moving and dodging all your attacks, getting in my little two, three pieces, and I'm moving, dodging, two, three pieces, moving, dodging, even though your health is going down lower, it's like the boss fights. You know what I'm saying? Like in Spider-Man, for example, we fight Venom. As long as you keep bobbing and weaving and dodging, you're gonna beat him before he beats you and you have a lot less health, but you faster and more mobile. That's just me though. Y'all can say y'all disagree or agree or not. Shout out to the Ryu fans. I'm not gonna take that double away from y'all. Still think Gene has it though in my heart. So let me know if y'all rocking with me with it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Maybe you guys want more death pass, put them down below in the comment section. But I'll catch y'all in the next one, man. It's me, boy. Shout out to this movie here. Michael Kagan, Black Avatar, King Leo. I'll catch you guys in the next video, man. I'm going for the day. Peace.